298. 298. Just a little taller than Jesus. 298. After that, we have a word of prayer. 298. If we have it, let's get all together the same. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. The light from heaven filled my soul. It broke my heart alone and broke my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus.
is the only one that can just speak a word Amen. and make a difference. Amen. We already know that you can do these things. And then we ask you, Heavenly Father, if you would just have mercy, Father, on us. Yes, Father, for we realize that when mercy will shoot out, suit our condition, pity will suit our case right now. Would you please, God, make a difference? Would you bless those that are already bereaved, those that have already have lost loved ones, dear God? Sometimes it just looks like, Heavenly Father, we, we can't get used to losing loved ones. Yes. Regardless of what you've told us and taught us, dear yes. God, sometimes it just seems hard to turn loose. Yes. But we're praying for the nation today. We're praying for the leaders of this country yes. in which we live because they need prayer. Yes. President Trump, yes. regardless of what people think about it, he's yes. still the president. Amen. So we want you to look down on him, dear God, and deal with his heart and his mind and his soul yes. and make a difference as to what's going on in this world today. This COVID-19 can be squashed. We know that you have the power to do that any given time that Amen. you want to. Amen. And we're just having a little talk with you about that today. Yes, uh, sir. Would you please make a difference? Police officers everywhere have a dangerous job. People in the military yes. have a dangerous job. Would you bless them all? Amen. And dear, dear God, bless this congregation. Amen. As a light sitting on a hill that can't be healed. And then, dear God, I want to take a moment out to pray for somebody special. The request came in. And we want to pray for Foundation. Amen. One of our sisters in Christ. Amen. Who had been tall in Kevin and Father for a long time with the illness. Amen. But dear God, she turned this request in that we might pray a special prayer, Father. You know, Heavenly Father, how to fix what's wrong. Yes, sir. And we ask you in the humblest manner we know how. We don't know no other way to ask you. But dear God, you made us feel so much better yes. from the prayer that already went up. Yes. And we pray, dear God, that you will help her in this particular illness that she has. Wow. That it would never come back. Yes. No more. Yes. Yes. And I know you got the power to do that. Yes. And we ask you that in her presence yes. make a difference in our life, dear God. Once she can see, feel, and understand, and she can know the power of God existing in her life. Yes, That's our preacher, his daughter and wife, who are always Amen. working hard by his side, and like harder than ever before. Continue to bless her, Father. She's been through a lot, too, Amen. in this last year. Amen. And Father, everybody that showed up tonight, and as I close this prayer, I want to say thank you once again. Look down on us with pity and mercy. And when the end comes, we know that death will push us into the paradise of God. So we shouldn't fear death like we do. Yes, because we know there's a better place on the other side of death for us. For those that love the Lord and have obeyed the gospel, die in the Lord, we'll be resurrected in the Lord and forever be with you throughout ceaseless ages in our prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us notice number 339, more about Jesus. 339. Thank you. 
Good Tuesday evening. Amen. We're glad to be here tonight. Glad yeah. to have the opportunity that we have on this evening to come together with the express purpose and or intent to study another portion of God's Word. I want to say thank you to uh, Brother Smoke for sharing in terms yeah. of the songs that he led us with on tonight. Yeah. Thank you to Brother Felton for taking us to the throne, yeah. speaking to God in regards to prayer and requests that were mentioned in particular. We're glad to have the opportunity to come to this place on tonight uh, to take the opportunity to share even electronically by way of Bible study. Yeah. I want to, just before we go to the text, while mutual consideration uh, just to remind you that we have uh, set some things up whereby for the benefit of those that may uh, be able to uh, have a desire to utilize uh, the outlines and or the PowerPoint presentations that Lord willing uh, I'll be loading those to our website after we have completed our time together on tonight. Uh, you can visit the Fisk Boulevard of Church of Christ website at www.fiskeblvdcoc.com. Again, it's www.fiskeblvdcoc.com. If you go there, it's my intention uh, sometime this evening after we've completed this time together that I will both the uh, PowerPoint presentation as well as the Word document. And so if you would like to get a copy, because it's going to take us a minute or two to get through the content of this particular study, uh, you might want to have that for your perusal. We would encourage you to do that uh, and stop by that you might be benefited accordingly. Thank you not only for these men in terms of getting things taken care of as far as the devotional aspect is concerned. Thank you for those who joined us from Facebook Live, from YouTube Live, and our conference call on this evening. We are appreciative for that. And then there are those that are here in the auditorium with us on this evening. We are still striving to be obedient. We've been asked to uh, keep the numbers down, and we're doing just that. But want to say thank you to all that come tonight that we can have this time together as we look to study God's Word. I want to call your attention just now to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And when we get to the fourth chapter of the book of 2 Timothy, I really want to call your attention to verse number 6 through verse number 8. It very well may be a very familiar pericope of scripture for some. Uh, this is the Apostle Paul, and uh, there are some things we'll say in terms of the circumstance that he finds himself dealing with uh, after I have opportunity to read the text. As a matter of fact, if you're kind of mindful of his background, the text is even that much more encouraging when given the consideration in terms of where is going on with Paul at this point in time in his life. Second Timothy chapter 4, it's verse number 6 to verse number 8. The Apostle Paul says to his young charge Timothy, For I'm not ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul says in verse number 7 of 2 Timothy chapter 4, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all those also that love his appearing. Thus is the reading from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 6 to verse number 8. Thankful to God to have the opportunity for us to give consideration from the topical consideration, in particular, taking time to live every day for Christ. Taking time to live every day for Christ. And then in particular, I did something because I really want to encourage, and there's something that I want to do uh, by way of a, a theme, a thesis of sorts, that I want to encourage, and that is quite simply, enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. I, I think about the idea of the reality being that we, we, we are here now. And we have to deal with whatever it is we have to deal with, including uh, the virus circumstance, the challenges we face with that. And, and I thought that I would be bold enough to suggest that since we're on this journey, take some time to enjoy the journey. Now, now one of the things that I want to say, in order for that to be so, it has to be very intentional. As a matter of fact, let me just share with you uh, in terms of what we'll do to support the overall thesis, taking time to live every day for Christ. One, I think in order to realize this, you need ingredients for living every day for Christ. There's some ingredients that, uh, that we need to utilize and we share with you from the Word of God on tonight. Uh, any of those of you that are familiar with baking and cooking and things like that, you know, any meal you put together, you got to have the right ingredients because the ingredients make all the difference in terms of how the end product turns out. And so we're going to suggest some ingredients for living every day. And then secondly, why should I live every day for Christ? There, there's a reason. I want you to know tonight, there's a reason. We're not 
We're not just going through motions. We're not just right. running aimlessly. We're not just wandering haphazardly with no purpose and or intent. Our desire when this thing is said and done, Matthew chapter 25, is to hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so there are some things that we have to do in order for the Lord to be willing to extend a such verbiage to us when everything is said and done. And then finally, we want to ask by way of question, what is living every day for Christ for? What is living every day for Christ? What is it? What does it mean to live every day for Christ? And we'll try to answer that as well uh, from the perspective of the text. And so if you get the chance to visit us at the website, you'll have uh, the opportunity to have the information in advance and have the privilege of being able to study so that you'll see where we intend to go in terms of what we'll do with this subject matter, taking time to live every day for Christ. By way of introduction, I need to say this. The text for our mutual consideration finds Paul in prison with a conclusive belief that his death is very near. Although this vantage point is from that of a person looking back over dedicated effort, he speaks to encourage Timothy, as well as today's readers, that there is reward for a well-ran race, a race that Paul has completed and one that he encourages others to complete faithfully, that they too might receive the reward. Now, now consider it now, and this is always interesting to me, here's Paul's situation, here's Paul's circumstance, that he is confined uh, with the uh, reality facing him that death is imminent. Uh, we believe that this would be the conclusion as it relates to his life. And so he's faced with that circumstance, but isn't it interesting that even though that would be the circumstance, he finds himself still writing to encourage others. He finds himself still having concern for somebody else. What a way to live a life. What a way to conclude a life. What a way to be at a place that even though your journey has come to its completion, you can be bold enough to suggest for somebody else, enjoy the journey, and here's how the journey might be enjoyed. And so we really want to look at things from that perspective. I'm going to ask the guys, uh, Brother Smoke, Brother uh, Felton, if you all would help me on tonight uh, in terms of the readings that we uh, want to suggest to everyone. Uh, first of all, I'm going to ask you, Brother Felton, if you would look to Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 10. And then, Brother Smoke, if you would go on over to James chapter number 1, verse number 12. James chapter number 1, verse number 12, and then Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10. We're going to go there uh, with Brother Felton first, and then James chapter 1, verse number 12, Brother Smoke. We're going to ask you to share the text from there. Now I want to go back to the text of our origin while those fellows are turning. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, remember it's verse number 6 through verse number 8. If I might just kind of summarize, if I might, from verse 6 to verse number 8, uh, I preach a sermon from this text uh, entitled, Ready, Set, Go. Uh, and that's really the circumstance if you look back at the text. The first thing that Paul says in verse number 6 is, he says, why I'm now ready to be offered. Ready, speaking to a state of preparedness. Now, friends, here's the thing. It's our hope, it's our prayer, it is our desire, especially as people of God. And for those, perhaps, that don't share with us in our religious conviction, it's our intention, it's our desire that you might find yourself in like place, getting ready and preparing yourself for the ultimate reality that you too, because all of us, are going to have to leave here. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 27. And the ready, the, the ready aspect of it suggests that although Paul understands that this is a conclusive end to his life, he says, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to be offered. I'm ready to give up my life. I'm ready to die. Yeah. Friends, I, I know we don't want to talk about it too, too frequently, but at the close of our lives, it's our prayer, it's our hope, it's our desire that we too will be able to say like Paul, I'm ready to be offered. And he says, secondly, the time of my departure is at hand. Now, you might ask, verse number seven, how could Paul make such a statement with such confidence? If you look at verse number seven, you really see, begin to see it right there. He says, well, I fought a good fight. That's first. He says, I fought a good fight. That, friends, that's, that seems to speak to faithfulness, to dedication, to devotion. Listen, if I ask the question, even right now, have you, have you, have you been fighting a good fight? Yeah. Preferably, you haven't gotten to the place that you've given up, that you that you throw up your hands in despair. Uh, hopefully, you are still still fighting on. You're still doing the best that you can in all that God allows you to be able to do. Yeah. 
So Paul looks back now. He's speaking, of course, in past tense because he says, I have fallen. In other words, this is what I've done. Friends, right now, in order for me and you to be able to make this statement, we need to be right now in the present working as fervently, as effectively, as faithfully as we possibly can. He says not only in verse number 7 that I'll fall into the fight, he says also, I've finished my course. I'm done. I, I, I've done what I need to do. I've said to us on times before and encouraged those of you that may be like me, if you're a procrastinator of sorts, quit procrastinating. The Amen. things that you know that you need to do, the things that you know you need to get done, the things that you know you need to turn your attention to, you need to go ahead and do just that. As a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33, the Bible would say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 18, we're told to give Jesus Christ the preeminence. First place, there are some things we need to get in order. We need to make a priority. Don't hesitate, don't linger, don't put off. Right. Our time is fixed. Yes. He says, not only have I fought a good fight, have I finished my course, Paul says, I've kept the faith. Right. Now, verse number 8, that's the go aspect. Yeah. Henceforth, as a result of, as a result of what? As a result of having fought a good fight, as a result of having finished the course, as a result of having kept the faith, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. With the Lord, the righteous judge will give me at that day, and not to be only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Friends, before I give over to Brother Felton for the reading of the text, verse 8, Paul says something that I'm glad he said. Because what he says in the text is, there's a crown of righteousness laid off for me. And this is what I love. And this is your shout. This is our shout. He says, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Now, now listen, listen, listen. How is a child of God going to love the appearing of Jesus Christ? I'm suggesting to you that if you can say like Paul, I've kept the faith, I've finished my course. If you've been faithful, yeah. And we're going to deal with that in just a second from Revelation chapter 2 at verse number 10. But I'm telling you right now, to, to be very intentional in terms of your living, to be very to be very determined in regards to what we want to do. And I'm going to tell you now, the thing of it is, I'm not saying this in, in, in disregard. I'm not saying this and just uh, being nonchalant about it. It's going to take effort, it's going to take energy, and it's going to take devotion. And we want to encourage you to that end. So he says, it's not only for me, but all those also that love is appearing. Listen, if it was God's to call and yours to answer, yeah. how would you feel about the idea of your having to be? Right. That's a serious question for all of us to be asking ourselves. And if there should stand anything in our way right now that would cause us to feel some kind of way hesitant or perhaps worry about the possibility. This is your time. This is your opportunity to get oneself together. Yeah. This is Revelation chapter 2 seems to be a compliment to this yeah. because when you look at the idea of the taking time to deliver, to live every day for Christ, you're talking about the ingredients. I'm talking about intentional living. Verse number 6 to verse number 8. Paul was very intentional in terms of what he did. And then, not only that, but we have to be faithful in terms of our living. We have to live faithfully or be faithful. Yeah. Now, now, there's something I want to say about this text. And I, I, I want to, if I might, uh, share with you uh, what I believe to be the value of the text. We teach from this text, and rightfully so. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I think we teach from this text, be faithful till you die. And I believe there is that application, absolutely. But I believe the text is stronger than just... Be faithful until you leave here. Be faithful until, and I'll show you why I say it. Revelation chapter 2, come on, Brother Felton. And then we can hand it over to you, Brother Smoke, over there in the book of James. Uh, sir, if you'll be prepared accordingly. Go ahead, sir. Bible read. Yes, sir. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. The people of God were going through some difficulties, some situations, and some circumstances. It was not easy. To be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus Christ, uh, was... Uh, Challenging to say the least. Behold, mm -hmm. the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Well, that ye may be tried. That ye may be tried or tested, I believe it translates. Be Greek, sir. Mm -hmm. And ye shall have tribulation shall ten days. Ten days. Yes, sir. Be thou faithful unto death. Now listen, listen, listen. So we oftentimes say, and I believe there's an application for this. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. We all have time to encourage folk, okay, live faithfully until you die. And I think that's a good one. Just get this right. 
Uh, I believe there's some, there's some application for that, uh, that we live faithfully until death, absolutely. But one of the things that I want you to think about is the idea that it's even stronger than just live faithfully or live faithfully until you die. Remember how he says, now some of you all will be cast into prison that you may be tried. Yeah. Uh, talks about the idea, give me the latter part of verse number 10 again. Uh, after, after the idea that you'll be cast into prison and tried. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Okay, back up a little bit before that, just before that. Uh, take it from the top. Let's take it from the top. Okay. Uh -huh. Fear none of these things, All right. which thou shalt suffer. Okay, so now, now listen. You, you're trying to help the people to see and understand. You're going to go through some stuff. Yes. But, but now, although you're going to go through, yes, be careful. Be, uh, be mindful. Don't, 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 don't throw up your hands in the space. Yes. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. I say that all the time. Uh, and, and, and watch what he says. Go ahead. Come keep reading, sir. Uh, the yeah, devil don't. shall pass some of you in the prison, prison that you may be tried. Read what the Bible says, sir. And ye shall have tribulation go, ten days. You have tribulation ten days. Read, sir. And these are faithful unto death. Right. Hold it right there. Now, some things are going to happen. Yes. We'll go through some things. Yes. Simply because you are following Jesus Christ. I need the people of God to get this in experience right now. God has oftentimes warned us or foretold to the child of God, listen, it's not going to always be easy. Amen. Texts talk about the idea uh, um, that, that, that you're going to you're going to be persecuted just because you named the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. Uh, you, you're going to go through things because people uh, yeah. don't like you, because yeah. you're not like them necessarily. You, yeah. you, you, are, you are to be in the world, but not of the world. Yeah. There, there are some things that we've been told that you, we're going to have tribulations, we're going to have some troubles, we're going to have... And here's the thing I want you to see. So be thou faithful until death. Right. Now, now, one of the ways that I like to try and simplify is be faithful in spite of the idea you're going to die. Okay, that, that's a little different than saying be faithful until you die. Means the same thing, but I want you to see and understand something in terms of how I'm trying to get to physics. Uh, it's my understanding that in days of old, Christians went through some heinous kinds of deaths. Yeah. Uh, we understand that everything from uh, folk would be bound by a rope around their ankles, and then they would begin to lower them head first into a boiling vat of oil uh, and, and charge, deny your faith or die. And if they didn't deny it, then, of course, they met the fate of that boiling vat of oil. Yeah. Uh, if it was commonplace for uh, Christians to be tortured in different ways for, uh, for, for moms, and, 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 and I know this, the, 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 the picture is not pretty, but I need you to understand this wasn't easy. A woman be pregnant and a long metal rod pointed in uh, would be inserted in the navel and they would begin to push and she would be told to deny or faith or die. That's be faithful. Now listen to me. That's be faithful in spite of the idea. Yeah. Because if I did not deny, I was going to die. Y'all get that? Y'all get that? That's strong. Because that's telling folk that although you're going to be tortured, although you're going to do something, don't deny Jesus Christ. Don't deny your faith. Be faithful until you die. Be faithful. And listen, listen. I, I, I try to make it very applicable to modern day terms. If somebody comes to me, God forbid, with guns to everybody's head and say, either you deny Jesus or you die right now. Yes, sir. Got to go. I, I wonder how many of us will be making confession by saying that. Y'all see that? Y'all see it? It's the idea. It's the idea. It's the idea that you are going to maintain your commitment, your faithfulness, your devotion, although it's going to cost you your life. Yeah. That's a strong content in terms of verse 10 to tell people that although you're going to die, be faithful. Don't deny the Lord. Maintain that commitment, even in terms of the idea that it could cost one their life. Yeah. Now, if nothing suggests endurance, Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 10, James says what, brother? Smoke if you would, James chapter 1, verse number 20. Blessed is a man that endures temptation. Blessed is a man that, now we're talking about temptation. Now we're talking about the need for endurance in this life. Because remember now, taking time to live every day for Christ. Not only do you need to be very intentional in terms of you living, to live faithfully, but there, there's a need for this life, in this life, to have some endurance. Now, this text, of course, is talking about temptation. But the fact of the matter is, and I want you to ever be mindful of the idea as well, that we are giving consideration as well to the idea of endurance. Now, endurance you need in terms of temptation, absolutely. But guess what? You need endurance in other aspects of your life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
Come on, give me the text. Give me, give me the whole of the verse if you would, brother. Come on, please. When he is tried, uh -huh. he shall receive a crown of life. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, I need you to just tell your neighbor you got to go through. Got to go through. Just tell your neighbor one more time. You got to go through. Got to go through. So, so when he is tried, now listen, listen, listen. It's, if it's when you go through and you have been faithful in terms of enduring while you're going through, that's how you receive the reward. But you can't get the reward except you go through. Can I say something to somebody today that you've got some things that you've got to go through in order to receive the prize? It, it, it's, it's true, I believe, that we want the prize, but we don't want to go through nothing. Well, yes. in, in this life is not possible. You, you're gonna have, you're gonna have, you're gonna have, you're gonna have some time. You're gonna have some challenges. You're gonna have some occasions. You're gonna have some situations that's going to encourage you every now and again to quit to give up. Mm -hmm. I heard Paul say, "Let us not grow weary in well day." He says, "We're gonna read if we faint not." Brother Felton, going over to First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 58. Brother Smoke, would you please Matthew chapter 6? And when you get to Matthew chapter 6. Maybe I need to have you around verse number 28 if I'm thinking properly. I might need you to move down a little bit further, but when you get to Matthew chapter 6, look around verse number 28. Perhaps we'll start uh, from that place in particular. But right now, uh, what I want to do, I'm going to go first of all, because I think in terms of what we're suggesting, taking time to live every day for Christ, taking time to live every day for Christ, ingredients for living every day for Christ, intentional living, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, living faithfully, Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10, being faithful, based on endurance, James chapter 1, verse number 12, endurance is a necessity for everyone that lives this life. And then here's what the Apostle Paul contributes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 58, if you would, Brother Felton. Therefore, my Therefore, my beloved brother, brother, Research. Be steadfast, Be steadfast. Unmovable. unmovable, always about, always about the work of the Lord. Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Folk will ask me every now and again, how you do it? And then a common slogan I've used for years is, I'm trying to stay busy and out of trouble. Yeah. And it's really the idea of trying to busy myself in positive fashion that I don't have time for the other foolishness. Right. Now, needless to say, I haven't always been effective in that. Right. I, and needless to say, I haven't always been successful right. in keeping myself out of trouble. Yeah. But I think what you see the Apostle Paul saying here in terms of being steadfast, unmovable, not capable of being moved, given, somebody said, given fully to the work. That's devotion, that's dedication. If we can devote ourselves to busy ourselves in positive fashion, we have less time to get ourselves into a lot of stuff right. that we really don't have a difficulty trying to get out of. Yes. Isn't it interesting that somebody says what it'll take you a matter of seconds to do, it'll take you a matter of years Amen. to get out of. Sure so if we can, if we can master some discipline, self-control, if, if we can master having ourselves where we ought to be by way of controlling oneself and behavior, that's going to be helpful. It's not that you're going to be successful all the time. We're going to fall. We're going to stumble. We're going to mess up. You're going to do some things that you're going to be embarrassed about. You're going to do some things that you're going to regret. But here's the thing that I would always have you to be mindful of. First of all, when you do have enough gumption, my mama would say, yeah. to, to acknowledge, you know what? I messed up. I messed up. That, that means I've sinned. James would suggest when we sin, James chapter 5, verse number 16, he says, acknowledge it, and then confess your faults one to another. Why are you doing that? So not, not so not so people can be nosy, uh, not so people can be all up in your business, so the people of God can pray for you. Because James says the affection for prayer of the righteous man availeth much. So when you mess up, when you fall short, listen, saints, I sin. I said, I repent of that. And, and listen, listen, when you repent, Acts 17, 30, the Bible says, the time for the sickness God weak that, but now the man's all being everywhere to repent. Repentance is a change of heart that leads to a change in action. So yeah. before you're going to change what you did to get you into trouble in the first place, you're going to have to have a change here. That's right. I believe the Bible says that godly sorrow work is repentance. You ever did something and you were so embarrassed about what you did, you didn't yeah. want nobody to know? Oh. You ever did something that was so uh, rough that you said before God, Lord, I'm, 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 Lord, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have done it. And, 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 and listen, 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 let me say something to you. For those who are struggling, for those who are, who are finding yourself, finding yourself repeatedly going through the same thing. You know that thing that you did the last time, that you said when you did the last time, Lord, if you get me out of this, I ain't going to do this no more. And you find yourself right back there again in the same place in terms of doing the same thing that you did the last time that got you into trouble. Listen, 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 listen. As 
long as you have that thing that keeps manifesting that guilt, that, that sense of conviction about your wrong, I'm not trying to dismiss what you did, but I'm saying there's a good thing, at least in the idea that you're convicted about the struggle and the things that you're dealing with. Because if you ever get to the place where you can do what you did and don't feel some kind of way about what you did, now you're in trouble. If I can keep doing what I know is no good for me and don't feel any conviction about what I'm doing, that's when I'm in trouble. But if I'm doing something I ain't got no business, I feel bad about it, especially before God, that's going to be a stimulus for my repentance. Yeah. Because godly sorrow works in repentance. Uh -huh. So listen, I know it's a struggle. I know it's not easy. I know sin, and I've always been mindful that sin has, it usually has some sense of, of, of pleasure attached to it. It's, it I, I tell the saints here, fist every now and again. I've had some time. I talked to my wife today. I said, I've got some things I'm going to do in terms of my weight. i got to get this too much. It's carrying too much. Well, and, and, and I lightheartedly say to folk every now and again, the challenge is, though, that, you know, I, I said, okay, I need to cut down in terms of not so much what I eat. I eat once or twice a day. But, but sometimes it might be what I eat. Yes. It might not be so much the idea of my eating as it is the idea of what I eat. But wouldn't you know about the time Brother felt that I decided I'm going to go ahead so I can get some of this yes, off. Sir. Amen. I'm going to open up the refrigerator and everything in there that Sister Sims and cook that I ain't got no business eating. Going to be calling my, y'all come on say it. I ain't the only one. I ain't the only one. Amen. I'm just teasing. But, but listen, there, 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 is, there is. Now listen, and you say, and I want you to say this. Eating is not a sin. But anything that you overdo yeah. is a sin. Yes. And, 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 and so there are some times and occasions, and, 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 and I, I will say this to you, uh, for some of us, if you if you are like me, I, I, have, some, I have a lactose intolerance, so I have to be careful about dairy products. But if you know that thing can harm you, and yeah. you still use it, you eat it, you consume it. Yeah. Right. So then we're trying to deal with the idea mm -hmm. of, and I'm using the lighthearted illustration of food, and, cake and sweets and whatever your thing is, yeah. uh, oh. it usually has something uh, that keeps pulling at us. Yeah. Uh, but it's a matter of it's a matter of discipline. It's a matter of self-control. So so here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. When you talk about the idea of being steadfast, unmovable, given fully to the work of always abounding in the work of the Lord, the King James would say, that's commitment. You have to be committed and you have to be devoted. You have to be very intentional in terms of. And I, and I think one of the things that we want to suggest is that God has to have priority. I'm actually brother Philip over to Colossians chapter one. Yeah. I mentioned the text, but we're gonna read. I'm going over to Brother uh, Smoke. I think I left him in Matthew chapter six. I think I had your brother Smoke about verse number twenty-eight, if I remember properly. Yes. And then when you read, sir, read, read, read for us so we can be a good, clear. Uh, let's start. I'm thinking we need to start around verse number twenty-eight. Would you read, sir? And why take ye thought of Raymond, which is the I'm going to back you up some more. I'm going to back you up some more. Matthew chapter 6, you have verse number 28. Yes. Uh, give, me, give me verse 26. Let me see what verse 26 says. Behold the fowls of the air. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can start there. And I'm going to read on down. We're going to go all the way down to verse number 33. Um, now, here, here's the thing that I want you to see. Um, Matthew chapter 6, uh, and there are some lessons that are taught in a few areas. One, um, speaks to the idea of us and not being worriers, uh, anxious, the text says. Um, we're discouraged from being that. As a matter of fact, if I remember properly, the text says, which of you by being anxious or by worry can add one cubit? Cubit is a very small measure uh, to your stature. And, and really, if you're not careful, worry can stunt your spiritual growth. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and we have to be out of place and, and, and I know it's not always easy to be able to go through and to be dealing with some things that have consumed you. See, this is a word for some folk that are worried about this COVID-19 thing right now. And, uh, and don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not concerned about it, absolutely. But I will not allow this uh, to inundate me to the degree that I can't move, I can't function, that, that, that I'm messed up, that I'm, I'm not able to do what I need to do on a daily basis. There, there are some things, and I know this is easier said than done, but there are some things we have to give over to God and let the Lord take care of the matter. Right. And, 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 and so in, in this text, He's going to talk about don't worry and not being worried. Years ago, I used to preach a, preach a sermon entitled, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Uh, Bobby McFerrin, I think, said that some, some years ago. Uh, and that's one of the things that it teaches uh, is blessed or happy 
Uh, and, and so there are some things that we can get to a place. And these are really matters of the mind. We, 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 we talked about uh, from the heart, uh, matters of the heart. Uh, a little while ago when we were together. And, and so you're going back to the way of thinking that helps us in terms of a lot of things that we deal with. I'm trying to set that up and go back, though, to Matthew chapter 6. I think I got to around verse number 25. I'm thinking, Russell, let's go ahead and read uh, and, and, and see what we get from the text. Verse 25, follow, please. Therefore I say unto you, uh -huh. take no thought of your life. Read. What shall, what, what shall, what you shall eat, uh -huh. and what you shall drink. Uh -huh. Know yet for your body. Listen, listen, listen. Take no thought. Don't be anxious. Don't be worried about what you're going to eat, what you're going to uh, drink, or raiment, what you're going to put on the body. Now, it's one thing to make such a statement, but then the text is going to deal with some uh, applications, some analogies to help us to see not only is God discouraging us or trying to encourage us not to worry, but then he's going to give us some reassurances in terms of, because see, listen, when you start talking about food, when you start talking about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, when you start talking about what I'm going to put on the body, when you start talking about having shelter, those are things that we deem vitally important. Listen, people will, people will sacrifice, people will do stuff, people will do things to have those essential items. But God says, even before the stuff that I know you need, I want you to make me a priority. Now, you'll, you'll see it. You'll see it. But, but let's, be, let's be plain. Let's be plain. Because, see, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you're going to live and you're going to take time to live every day for Christ, you're going to have to give God his proper due. You're going to have to give God right place. And that's first place. Right. Come on, bro. Tell me what verse you got. Keep reading. Verse Read, sir. Behold the fowl of the air. Okay, now, now watch the example. So he said, now, God knows you need clothing. God knows you need food. God knows there are some things that you need when you live in this life. And then he's going to turn to the analogy. He's talking about the fowls of the air, the birds. Read, sir. For they sow not. They sow not. Neither do they reap. Neither do they reap. Read what the Bible says. Nor gather the barns. Nor gather the barns. Read what the Bible says, sir. Yet your heavenly father. Now listen, 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 listen to the fowls of the air. They don't sow, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't pack up, they don't, they don't can stuff, put it in the freezer or put it in the pantry, uh, and, and they don't prepare like, like humanity does and, and, and put all of this, they don't do all of that, but God takes care of them. Now, if you understand what we would be to be insignificant, just the birds in the air, the, 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 the stuff that's flying around out there, uh, if God will take care of them, Read, read, read what the Bible says, sir. Read what the Bible says. It said, uh -huh. Father feed them. Yeah, read, sir. It said, Are ye not much better than mm -hmm. they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, tell your neighbor I'm more important than the birds. More important than the birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all got to get there. Y'all got to get there. Because that's one of the things that he's saying. He's saying, Now, listen, if God is taking care of them, and you're more important than the birds, don't you know he'll take care of you? We got to tell some folk right now, some people that are worried. Now listen, I'm not dismissing, because I know this, this virus thing has impacted us, man. Some folk are, are struggling in terms of their health. Yeah. Some yeah. folk have lost their lives. Yeah. Listen, but I, I, I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I believe when the Hebrew writer says there's a point of man wants to die. I believe it's going to happen for us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm counting on and we're depending on God to keep us. For those of us that have been sustained, that have been kept, that have health and strength. For those perhaps even that have had the virus and have recovered. Thank God for it. But there is a time appointed unto us that we're going to have to leave here. God never intended for us to be here indefinitely. So since I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of the idea, you know what? God's in control. God's in control. God's in control. Listen, you go nowhere before God allows it to happen. Amen. If you don't believe that, just check behind me in Job chapter 1. When, when, when God uh, counseled and had a conference, if I might, with Satan, um, and, and they set the parameters of what the adversary was going to be able to do, remember that God told him, you can do anything you want to do it, except you can't take his life. That's right. And I'm thankful to God that the Lord is in control in terms of when we need him. Uh, and so it's going to be what God is going to allow uh, and, and so I think about the idea then, now you're trying to deal with anxious, being worried, being, being consumed with that. And then I'm going to tell you something, and, 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 and hold your point, Russell, if, 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 because I might, I might exhaust time, but I shared this with the uh, people of God uh, having a, a dental appointment uh, on an occasion, and, um, and I'm telling you, and, and, and you've got your own story that would even illustrate the point of uh, worry and how it impacts us. Uh, with, with having a tooth, had a tooth, 
that needs to be extracted. And uh, when the doctor's staff took my blood pressure, he said, you know, your blood pressure is up too high for us to do the procedure. Mm -hmm. right. You know, when we, when we go to the doctor nowadays, you know, that's one of the things. Or you go to the hospital, you've got a procedure scheduled. You know, some things, if your blood pressure is up too high, they'll cancel the procedure. But I'm sitting in the dental office, and he says, Mr. Sims, if your blood pressure is up too high, uh, we don't want to, under this circumstance, uh, perform this procedure. Uh, and so I'm, I'm sitting there, and uh, he says, I'll tell you what. We're going to deal with the lights. What kind of music do you like? I told him what kind of music do you like. He said, okay, we're going to dim the lights. We're going to recline the chair back. Man, Lord, have mercy. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna relax you. Uh, you. You lay back and relax. We're going to give you a few minutes to just take a, take a little light, a little light, like that. And he did that, turned out the lights, turned on the music, reclined it back, and walked out. When he came back in, he said, all right, Mr. Simpson, we're going to take your blood pressure. Took my blood pressure. Blood pressure was down. He said, okay, now we can do the procedure. Amen. All I want you all to see is worry can make you physically sick. All right. If you if you worry tough enough, uh, I, I've seen people that have big events coming up. I remember I was in an oral competition, a oratory competition, I should say, some years ago, and one of the female contestants uh, began to get nervous about her speaking part, and she was on the stage, and she was speaking, and, and then she began to speak kind of fast, and you could tell that she was speaking at a faster clip than she normally does. And as she began to speak, then she was trying to catch her breath. Passed out right there on stage. And that was nothing more than stage. The stage being nervous and those kinds of things. And it overtook her to where it made her body respond physically. Now, now when she passes out, she's, her, her breathing is going to go back normal. The body is doing that to protect itself. Yeah, yeah. And so, so she passed out. They revived her. Everything worked out okay. But all I want you to see is stress and worry can impact yeah. our physical well-being. Good. I got to get ready to stop. Well, tell me what verse you have, Brother Smoke. 27. Yeah, verse number 27. Give, give, me, give me verse number 27. Read, sir. Which of you, uh -huh. by taking thought, read, can add one cubit. Small measure. Keep reading. Unto his stature. I suggested that it not only is a small measure, but it, it does just reverse. Uh, worry can stunt your spiritual growth. If you start to worry about things, if you start to if you start to be so consumed with something that more than likely you don't have the capacity to change anyway. Yeah, listen, 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 listen. Uh, you ever worried about something so tough? And then when things were said and done, it worked out to be nothing like the way you were worried? Sure. I, 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 you, you ever had one of them doctor's calls, doctor called you? Doctor called you on Tuesday afternoon. And they tell you we can't see you till next Thursday. But the doctor wants to see you. And you think, okay, just tell me on the phone. You, you, on the phone. Just tell me, just tell me, just tell me now. I, I, no, no, the doctor wants to see you. And, 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 and from the time you hang up the phone yeah. to the time you go see the doctor, yeah. you kind of messed up. Yeah. And, and, you, and, you, and you get in the doctor's office and he says, well, you know, your test results came back pretty good. I just got a couple of things. You don't want to do this, want to do that. And you're looking at him like, why couldn't you just have told me about that instead of having me worried. Y'all y'all feeling me, y'all feeling me. Instead of having me worried and messed up. I could have had a good week, a good weekend and Lord Jesus. So 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 there's something about our capacity. Now Colossians chapter one, real fellow. Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one. We don't stop. Colossians chapter one, verse one eighteen. Verse one eighteen. Just dealing with the idea that God is priority. If you you're talking about ingredients for living for Christ. And the idea of course that we're striving to live every day for Christ, taking time to live every day for Christ. The last thing we're saying is, make God priority. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 30, reason seek you first. Give him about his righteousness. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 18 says, And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. First place. Preeminence in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 18 means first place. So all I want to suggest in terms of these ingredients for living for Christ, intentional living, even as the Apostle Paul, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 through verse number 8. Live faithfully, Revelations chapter 2, verse number 10. Simplistic, be faithful. Based on endurance, James chapter 1, verse number 12. Be steadfast, unmovable, given fully. 
to the word of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 58. God must be our priority. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 18. We pray God for everyone that has been able to be with us during this Bible study on this evening that you've been benefited. As I stated earlier, if you'll go to our website at www.fiskeblbdcoc.com, it's our intention to uh, post the uh, PowerPoint presentation as well as the Word document that you can study. Uh, we're probably going to have a couple of more weeks more than likely under this particular uh, subject matter, so we would love for you to have the opportunity to study. Thank you for spending the time with us. If we said anything along the way, please leave some comments down below. We'll respond accordingly. Send a text message. There are several ways if you go to the website that you can contact us. If you have any questions, any concerns, if I sped through something or if I wasn't clear, uh, we don't preach a gospel that you can't investigate. I want to again say thank you to Brother Smoke. Thank you to Brother Felton. Uh, thank you for all that come that we have this time together on tonight. Until the next time, may God bless and may God keep is our humble prayer. Amen. Amen.